Welcome into 10 Questions with NBC10 Boston. I'm Kwani Lunis, and today's guest, John Barros, was previously the chief development, economic development chief here in the city of Boston and recently resigned so that he could run for mayor here in Boston. John Barros, thank you for joining me today. Kwani, thanks for having me. Of course. And I do want to start with the point I just made. You decided to resign after seven years in that office. What, why make the leap back into the ring for mayor again? Yeah, no, I think, you know, uh, I, I served seven years, as you said, as chief of economic development for the city. Um, and I, you know, ever since I can remember, ever since 14 years old, I've been in public service. I've been doing work in the neighborhood. I was an early organizer doing environmental justice in my neighborhood that was um, a neighborhood uh, that had the highest rate of asthma, still has a high rate of asthma. We were trying to clean up vacant lots and clean up the toxins in the air and the ground. Um, and I've been committed. I've been committed. In my whole life, um, uh, I've been working to improve Boston as a lifelong resident, a father of four children in the city. Um, so the future of Boston means everything to me. And that's why I'm running from here. And you did mention that Boston is ready for a black man like you to be a mayor here. Why do you think that? Yeah, no, Boston has changed. Um, it's not the same Boston that I grew up in as a young black man. Uh, people talk about it everywhere. Uh, Boston is more open. You know, I, I'll be I'll be honest, I could not move around in Boston so so easily as I do today. Um, felt fear, fear for my life to go to certain neighborhoods um, that weren't as open. And, and, and that's not the case. Uh, today, Boston's neighborhood has become to uh, be less segregated, more integrated. Um, we've developed as a city, we've changed practices. The Boston police has changed practices. We still have a way to go, but now in City Hall, I've got people who look like me. I have people who look like me in the business community. Boston is a different place. And, and for me, I believe that Boston is ready for a, a black man. And Mayor Marty Walsh named you, the former mayor, named you to this inaugural role as the chief economic developer here in Boston. Why do you think that role translates into the mayoral office? Well, that's a great question. Um, I now have uh, seven years of helping to run a city that uh, we attracted 140,000 jobs to. Uh, we were able to bring unemployment down to 2.4%. Uh, we brought unemployment down in every neighborhood and in fact, what we started to do was work with people in our neighborhoods to get better jobs. You, you, so it was about up economic mobility. Um, at the same time that we made um, strides around employment, we also made strides around the number of small businesses in our city, improving and increasing the number of small businesses, putting more resources and technical assistance to small businesses, all the while making investments in schools, libraries, parks, and still uh, being, um, uh, you know, credited as a, uh, a triple A credited city, meaning, meaning that we did a really good job of managing our business and being in fiscal strength. And that puts, in me, in oh. that puts me in place to be ready to hit the ground and, and be running as soon as I am elected mayor this fall. Um, and, and as we're coming out of the pandemic, I believe Boston needs someone who's ready. Uh, to hit the ground and answer these questions and challenges that we have today. And the city is still dealing with some of the effects of this pandemic. A lot of small businesses have suffered as well. I know you own a small restaurant here in the Boston area, the Cape Verdean restaurant. How have you dealt with the after effects of the pandemic? Yeah, no, it was tough. It, it still continues to be tough. Um, we still have, I believe, 23% of our small businesses in Boston are still closed. Um, in terms of restaurants, uh, restaurant capacity is only at 44%. When you look at hotels, uh, hotel uh, occupancy is only in the 30s. Uh, we, still have, we still have a long way to go. As a, as a business owner, as you said, uh, an owner of a restaurant in Dorchester, we felt the pain um, firsthand. And so we needed to get creative and think about how we can keep our families still employed and all the workers that work for us. Uh, for so long. And so management took a cut. We got creative and did more delivery of different things and shifted people's job descriptions in our restaurant to, to make sure that we can do as much as we can for people. As chief of economic development, I stood up six different funds at the city to provide direct financial assistance to our, to our different businesses. 
as mayor, I'd make sure that we go big on our amenities, go big on the businesses that were most hurt. That is our restaurants. It's our performing arts businesses. It's our cultural businesses. Boston soul, in fact, uh, is made up by those places that people can come and have an experience in, meet someone in, you know, have a business conversation, strengthen your network. In fact, if, if we're going to bring workers back and ask people to come back to our city, we've got to make sure that those businesses are up and running. And how do you effectively do that? Well, we have some financial assistance that's coming from the federal government. And we need to make sure that we are using those for one-time expenses that are going to help bring our economy back and bring revenue back in terms of tax base, put people back to work. And so I would use that money coming from for relief from the pandemic to make sure that our, you know, we have big conventions coming back to Boston, that we have uh, people and tourists coming back and that people know it's safe. I launched a, um, I, I uh, designed uh, a campaign, Kwani, uh, I don't know if you saw it, it's called All Inclusive Boston. Mm -hmm. And the campaign uh, recently launched to ask people to come back to Boston. But while we did that, we had to make sure that people saw a very diverse Boston. We showed our neighborhoods. We saw, we showed, we showed different types of people um, in different parts of our city so that we're sending the message that everyone's welcome back. Please come back to the city, support our businesses, come eat at our restaurants, come stay in our hotels. That's how you bring it back. The mayor's gotta be a champion for the city. He's gotta be out there rooting for our city and making sure that people know it's safe to come back and we want you here. And I did see that campaign you mentioned. And to your point, the perception of Boston is not necessarily an inclusive one. How do you change that narrative moving forward from the campaign itself? Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. It's not an inclusive one. Way too often I'm asked as a black man, you know, why Boston? Boston's not very friendly to black people. And, you know, that perception is still out there. It, 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 it's, you know, we still have a lot of work to do, but it is an old perception. Boston's made a lot of strides. As I remember as a, a high school student starting the, the first black student union in my high school to make sure, in fact, that we were seen, valued, had conversations. I became the African-American president, the, the president of the African-American society at Dartmouth College when I was in college to do the same thing and be able to celebrate uh, diversity of, of the college. Uh, as mayor, I will make sure that, that I am uh, Boston's biggest cheerleader that I'm out there uh, talking to people that Boston uh, is a place that's diverse, that Boston is a place that celebrates diversity and make sure that we can bring more people of color into leadership positions, make sure that we can invest in public education, job training and career pathways for upward mobility and people can talk about it and everyone can take advantage of it. Professional development of people of color should translate into more business leadership, executive leadership. And then I'd invest in the public arts in a way that celebrates Boston's cultural diversity. Um, and then I'd advocate for diversity at the highest levels of, of the different sectors of, of our economy. Um, it is important that we celebrate, invest in, and make sure that we are very clear and, 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 and visible with our diversity in the city. And to that point, you are Boston born, raised, educated, and of a Cape Verdean background. That's a, another demographic here in Boston that is very highly represented. What do you love most about your Cape Verdean culture? Now, I'm, I'm a proud Cape Verdean. Um, the Cape Verde Islands uh, uh, in the West Coast of Africa have been part of the, the, the this country's history for a very long time. Uh, we were part of, uh, of the unfortunate Atlantic slave trade where um, uh, people would stop on the island of, 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 um, of Santiago. Um, and so we, went, we were able to bring the mayor back and a coalition from Boston to visit those ports. Uh, but then also visit the tradition that has come from Africa to the United States um, and talk about the impact of immigrants uh, to Boston. Mm -hmm. Immigrants contribute to $2.5 billion of our economy. Um, we help to provide um, uh, supports for 20,000 jobs in our city by the economic activity that, 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 that people do here. I'm proud that Boston has an incredibly diverse black community of people from Cape Verde, from Jamaica, from Haiti, from um, you know all up and down the East Coast, but all around uh, the country, African Americans uh, with steep history in ab the abolitionist movement here in, in in Boston. You know, I was proud when we were fighting for our liberation uh, in in Cape Verde. Uh, our our primary leader Amoka Cabral came to meet with the Black Panther Party here in the United States and form an alliance 
um, as, a, as a pan-Africanist movement. Um, Boston has a lot of that diversity, a lot of, uh, a lot of good uh, abolitionist history to celebrate. And, and, and we have to do a better job of, of talking about that with particularly our students and making sure that everybody knows about that history and can celebrate it. What do you wish more people knew about Cape Verdean culture specifically? About Cape Verdean culture, um, you know, I'll do a little bit of shameless plug here. You should visit our <laughs> restaurant at Restaurant Cesaria, where we have live music, uh, good Cape Verdean food. I think um, Cape Verdean music and food uh, is such an amazing export. Uh, we have so many tourists that visit the island, uh, but most of them come from Europe. And I think there's, there should be more uh, tourism based out of the U.S. Uh, would love to see people there and, and help celebrate our local economy there, but also take part and in, 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 um, enjoy the, the culture that we have uh, as, a, as a country. I have to admit, I don't think I've had Cape Verdean food. So what would you say is a signature dish that someone should start with? <laughs> Kwani, I'm, 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 I gotta say, I'm disappointed because I, I know, know I know you know so many Cape Verdeans, and I um, do. I know you do. Um, <laughs> but but you know, it's uh, the signature dish is probably kachupa, okay. and it's it's made in so many different ways. Um, you can have it vegetarian style. You can have it with a lot of different meats. You can have it refried, um, and that's how people typically eat it in the early morning. Uh, but that's that's what I would uh, you know sort of uh, send you to go get some kachupa. Okay, I got to try that out. And as I mentioned, you are from Boston and you've been working hard in the city for seven plus years. What do you do when you're not working? <laughs> well, my real full time job is as a father and a husband. Um, right. I've got four beautiful children uh, that I um, am madly in love with. And, and every time I do something, I think about them. Um, my eldest is nine. Um, the, the, the second boy is, is seven. And then I've got one who's four, and then my daughter, uh, the, the princess of the house, is yeah. is uh, three years old. Um, so that's that's what I do. But I'm also active in my local community, active in my in my faith based community, and my at my church. I play the drums at my church. Um, yeah. and so, um, you know, it's basic. It's but 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 I I enjoy it. Um, and uh, um, you know, and then and then also, I'm 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 still involved with a lot of different community projects. Uh, I just got off the phone with somebody that I that I, I mentioned earlier about some youth programming this summer and what we're going to do to make sure that our young people are still activated and and engaged this summer, um, even though we're seeing some signs of potential potential increase in violence, and that's really worrying me. You have been a big advocate for the youth here in Boston, and you mentioned your four children. How do they shape your view of this? mayoral seat. Yeah, no, they, you know, the young people, if there's anything we can do um, to be to be helpful, it's help a young person. Um, you know, you, I, I mentioned my four uh, kids, but it's also the other young people. It's our neighbors. It's the it's the it's the young people in, in my church. It is, uh, you know, the young people that I've that I've been working with in this neighborhood who call me maybe for advice, who I've mentored, who I've uh, provided, uh, you know, information on different opportunities on. Um, I'm working with the young black and black and brown boys group here in the neighborhood, MBK 617, wonderful uh, group of young men, all volunteers, nobody gets paid, um, but they but they engage over 150 young people in this neighborhood with, with incredibly positive programming. That's the kind of things we should be doing. All adults should have at least a couple of young people that they're mentoring. That's what I got as a young person. And that's why, you know, I was able to do organizing early. That's why I was able to join the board of the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative at the age of 17 because of, you know, strong adults around me helping to coach me and advise me. That's why I became the executive director of the Dudley Street Neighborhood at the age of 26 and uh, stayed there for 13 years. Um, young people and having a positive relationship with a mentor matters. Why do you think the people of Boston should vote for you? I think the people of Boston should vote for me because I'm the best candidate. Um, and I'm the best candidate because of my experience. Um, I'm the best candidate because I have decades of executive experience as a city leader uh, that's built on decades of, of leadership experience in my neighborhood. Um, as I said, as executive director of the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative, where we built affordable housing, parks, playgrounds, urban agriculture land, urban farming. Um, a 10,000 square feet greenhouse. 
because um, I um, care about education and the education that our children ha um, get. I care about our youth and our children. And as a former school committee member, um, worked hard to, to make sure that uh, BPS was the best district uh, in the country. I've helped to start schools. I've helped to turn around schools. I have a series of leadership experiences that I'm gonna use to improve all of these things in Boston and make sure that Boston can meet the challenges and, um, and the moment that is uh, in front of us because of COVID. John Barrows, thank you so much for joining 10 Questions with NBC10 Boston and best of luck with the rest of your campaign. Thanks, Juan. I appreciate the time. Appreciate your leadership and, and your ability to engage people and so that people know what's going on out there. Thank you very much.